and hello welcome everyone to this video so in this video uh, I mean in the last video we were talking a little bit about uh, subnetting and in this video I want to uh, continue uh, on from subnetting uh, and subnet masks into uh, onto something more interesting you might be familiar with we want to talk about routers and uh, private IP addresses in this video so before we start um, let me see 30 seconds in yeah before we start i want to uh introduce you some of the links i'll be using and of course credit some uh, uh some uh, peop uh some uh, important uh, people so again i'll be i referenced i learned a lot of the stuff from the complete networking uh computer networking complete course by geeks lesson it was <coughs> excuse me was by google um apparently uh so if you search this on YouTube, you will be able to find this video or else I'll just paste it for you. And uh, so yeah, you, you will have a lot more in-depth look into IP stuff in this video, but I'm just kind of condensing it down and dumbing it down a lot for uh, people who are just trying to find out what's going on on their network. Not necessarily that, uh, and you're not necessarily going to become an IT professional of any sort. It's just for, very, uh, just for your information. I'm also going to uh, uh, use this uh, trace route, yeah, trace route command. Okay, this is uh, from Linux. Uh, I don't know whether. Yeah, trace route. Trace route. Okay, trace route. Uh, I'll just use the Wikipedia page. Uh, this is something you can find inside uh, <coughs> inside Linux. Whereas for the Windows version is trace RT if I'm not wrong. Okay, so mm, clear trace route. Yeah, so trace route will be the Linux version. Trace RT will be the Windows version. Okay, RT of course stands for route, but it's sort of the same thing. Okay, I'm gonna talk. Uh, look at some sort. Uh, I mean, I'm gonna reference this page for the sort of routers we have. Uh, and what routing actually does. <coughs> uh, I'm going to talk about non-routable address space, okay, and network address translation. Okay, all of these uh, are from geek for geeks so you can take a look at their website. They have very good articles. But just in case you don't have the patience to look through those articles, uh, yeah, here we are. Okay, so I'm going to continue from here. <coughs> okay. Um, yeah, I'm going to continue. Uh, I'm going to start here. Okay, so let's start with the question. Okay, one common thing you might find as you look at your IP address, you might see this 192.168 uh, blah blah blah. Uh, um, this uh, common string of IP addresses. In fact, if you look at your router IP addresses, uh, a lot, some of those router IP addresses can come in this form 192.168.1.1. And this will be the same. <coughs> excuse me. This will be the same uh, IP address, regardless, uh, regardless of which uh, computer network you are looking at. <coughs> excuse me. Yeah, it will be the same regardless of which computer you are looking at, and you ask, you might be asking yourself, wait, okay, why is my IP address the same as yours? Okay? Do it, does it mean we are we are like the same computer? Uh, and are all IP addresses unique or not unique? Okay, so what's the story behind us having the same IP address or our routers having the same IP address? Okay, so um, here's the story, okay? Here's the story. Okay, so the story of uh, IP addresses is that there are not enough IP addresses. Okay, let me explain why uh why we need to kind of share ip addresses so-called share ip addresses why do we need to quote unquote share ip addresses okay so the the problem is specific to ip version 4 okay there are it's a 32-bit number okay so if you learn about the format of IP version 4, you'll know that uh, all these strings of numbers separated by dots, these are actually 8-bit numbers over here. 192 is represented by an 8-bit number. 
8 bit. These are all 8 bit numbers. 168 is an 8 bit number, 1 and 1 is an 8 bit number. So, how many possibilities do we have if we use IP version 4, which is 4 8 bit numbers or 30, one so called long string of 32 bits? So, how many possible IP addresses do we have? So, to answer that question, we just use <coughs> okay, a bit of math 2 to the power of 32, which is about. Uh, Hey, is it 8, 16, 24, 32? So yeah, um, if you, you notice, this number is actually somewhere in about 4.3 billion, okay? If you divide it by 1 million, you get 4,000. If you divide it by 1 billion, divide by 1 E9, you get about 4.294 billion, okay? This is about 4.294 billion IP addresses, okay? 4.294 billion possible IP version 4 addresses. Okay, so um, IP version 4 is the more common IP address. It's uh, is the one with the four strings of numbers like that. IP version 6 is another topic for another time. Okay, but in fact, there are about 4.3 billion I possible IP addresses. Now, how many people are there in the world today? Yeah, you know, you'll easily exceed this number. And not only that, uh, each, uh, each uh, computer has an IP address, each phone has an IP address, each iPad has an IP address, and if you have multiple computers and printers, each of them will need to have an IP address so long as they are connected to a network. Now, given, given this uh, uh, situation, you'll find that you're running out of IP addresses really quickly. There's not, there's simply not enough IP addresses for everyone on the planet. So what do we do? <clears throat> so let's talk about the solution to the IP version 4 problem. Okay, and that's also why, that's also why we share certain IP addresses. So uh, let me introduce you to something called non-routable address space. Okay, non-routable address space. Okay, you'll see in this course as well, but I'll not uh, <clears throat> go through that. Let's go through the gig for gigs one. So it says here the IP version four doesn't support enough IP addresses for every person's every person. Sorry. Okay, IP version four addresses are now depleting. Blah blah blah. So what the long and short story is. Okay, people actually reserve certain IP addresses so that. You know, these IP addresses will not be, you will never ever route uh, traffic uh, directly to this space. Now what it means is that um, <coughs> these IP addresses here can be used by anyone. Okay, so some of the more common ones are the 192.168 examples. So any IP address you see in this range, 192.168.0.0 to 192.168.255.255. Okay, these are what we call non-routable IP addresses. It means that more than one person on this planet at any point in time can be using the same IP addresses in this range. Likewise, uh, um, not only that, uh, 172.16.0.0 uh, forward slash 12. This is insider notation. We already discussed that, which which means this, this uh, range of IP addresses will also uh, be used for this same effect. Likewise, 10.0.0.0 to 10.255.255.255. 255. Okay, same idea here. You you can have that many computers. Okay. So um this these are these are some examples of non-routable IP address space. And you'll notice that uh, <coughs> the 192168 uh, IP address space is more common for homes because they are smaller. Okay, you see the range is smaller. It goes from, <coughs> excuse me, 192.168.0.0 all the way to 255.255. So um, this is actually the smallest range of IP addresses that are used. The above two are normally, I guess, you use it for bigger networks, right? Bigger networks. So you can sort of tell the size of your network just by looking at this. Okay, or at least the capacity of your network. Okay, so um, yeah, 
So the advantage here, as you can see, it helps conserve IP uh, 4, IP version 4 address space. So um, if you have uh, your IP address in this range, okay, you will not be able to access it, okay, normally. So if I if I ping, if you have your IP address 192.168.11 and I try to ping this IP address, I will probably end up pinging, you know, the IP address 192.168.11 on my own network and not on your network. So that is also, that also offers another advantage. It makes it much harder for me to access uh, data on your computer because we share the same IP address ultimately. Your IP address is kind of hidden from me. So it says here, extra layer of security. Since these networks cannot be accessed by exterior gateway routers, so network is, well, I won't, I won't say 100% safe. You can still download VMware and viruses, but um, I cannot access it directly. So this also protect, uh, gives some data protection and privacy. I'm like just reading off the website here, just like reading off the slides. Okay, but um, so, yeah, the idea is that I cannot ping your IP address. I will end up pinging my own IP address here. <coughs> Excuse me. So, yeah. So if you if you talk about one nine two one six eight one and one, okay, which one nine two dot one six eight dot one dot one are we referring to? Yeah. Okay. So uh, there can be many people sharing this IP address. So how does the whole internet, you know? figure that out. How does it work out this traffic? Okay, how does it work out the uh, that um, when I send a request, let's say I go to google.com from this IP address 192.168.11 or 192.168.1.200 something, I don't know, whatever. How does Google know to send the, send the information back to this specific computer? So uh, I want to introduce you to uh, routing, okay? okay, routing, and something called network address translation, but uh, <coughs> that will come after we cover routing. Okay, so uh, let's talk about routing first. Okay, routing. Okay, how data travels across one or more than one network okay because the uh, last time okay uh, I think when we started we just talked about very small computer networks okay very small computer networks let's say each box is a computer with a specific IP address and a specific MAC address <coughs> and let's draw a triangle which says and I say this guy is a router R, right? This guy is a router, and somehow it's connected to this other network here with another few squares inside. I mean, I'm not drawing my my squares well. Let's use the straight lines. Okay, one, two, three, four, fine. One, two, three, four. <coughs> So each small square here represents a computer. Um, each uh, square here also represents a computer. Triangles, so-called, represent the router. One, two, three. Okay. So uh, yeah, let's say let's say here we have a computer on one nine two one six eight dot four dot dot two dot one. Okay. Here we have another network that uses the one seven two. One seven two dot. I have no idea. 172.16 Okay, let's just give you a random IP address 16.4.4 or 4.4 Okay, so um, Okay, again uh, If you want to send a <coughs> Excuse me If you want to send a packet from uh, 192.168.2.1 to 172.16.4.4 How do we do it? Alright, so let's go to our uh, concept of Ethernet frames and IP datagram. Okay, so uh, we have two networks here. This is the simplest case. So 
we have an Ethernet frame. Okay, Ethernet frame. Okay, this is the data link layer. Or if it's a Wi-Fi system, we have Wi-Fi as well in this uh, data link level. But let's just talk about the simplest case where it's Ethernet. So you have a uh, uh, find a uh, source MAC address and final MAC address. All right, and then um, so yeah, the source MAC address will be whatever MAC address this computer has. The final MAC address, you know, um, maybe this this router doesn't really know. I mean this this network. <coughs> is unable to know this computer your computer your source computer is not able to know yeah the mac the mac address of this computer we don't know what the mac address is okay so uh how do we like figure that out because these are on two separate networks so we need to not, not just look at the data link layer we need to look at the network layer so we have ip datagram this is the network layer Okay, uh, I think, I don't know whether I introduced data link so uh, clearly the last time, but data link talks about internet. When you want to talk from computer to computer, uh, you have to have your MAC addresses. These are, these are somewhat all related to the data link layer. So data link layer talks about uh, your physical addresses, whereas IP, IP layer or the network layer talks about IP addresses, internet protocol. So... Okay, let's talk about IP, the IP datagram, which is similar to the Ethernet frame. And then you have a section in your IP datagram, uh, because these are all bits and bytes, right? Uh, uh, ones and zeros. So some ones and zeros will be catered for talking about MAC address. Some ones and zeros here will be talking about uh, the IP address. So in your Ethernet uh, data frame, there will be something called a data payload. Okay, so that so uh, this is this is uh, where all your IP addresses here will be. This will be uh, over here. This is the Ethernet payload, and inside the Ethernet payload, you have uh, a header a header section where you should have your uh, uh, source IP address, destination IP address. <coughs> So okay, so how how do we sort of think about this? Okay, I'm not expert at how this thing actually works, but here's here's uh, uh, a quick uh, overview of my understanding. Anyway, may or may not be right, but you can go and take it, uh, uh, check it. But okay, the source IP address will be this, and I want to send it to this IP address. So that's very easy to fill up. Okay, one nine two one six eight dot. Uh, 2.1 the computer will kind of figure it out for you here's 172.16.4.4 <coughs> so the source and destination ip address are over here okay <coughs> excuse me so how does the mac address uh, field get filled up okay how does the mac address field get filled up okay so the computer will definitely know its own mac address okay so that one doesn't need really need explanation so um, the source MAC address doesn't change. Okay, so uh, your PC's MAC address. PC's MAC address. Okay, and then um, the second one will be okay. Well, I don't know what this uh, MAC address here is. Okay, one seven two sixteen four four. I don't know what this MAC address is, right? So, uh, however, your computer is able to guess looking at this IP address here, and of course the subnet mask, which I'm not I'm not putting it here. It will be able to tell that this this thing is on another network. One seven two sixteen four four is on another network. Okay, so this at this step I don't know what the final MAC address is, but uh, the computer is able to figure out this is on another network. Okay. Once you figure out this is on another network, okay, uh, and we don't know what the MAC address is, uh, the computer will just come up with a simple solution. I need, 
I don't know the, the MAC address of the this this guy, 172.16.4.4. So I will just send, okay? I will just decide, the computer will just decide, send it to the router. So we'll have the router, routers, uh, router or gateways, uh, MAC address. So we'll just send it to the router or gateway and let the router or, or gateway take care of it, of this MAC address problem, right? So um, the, the the Ethernet frame will be such that I have the, the uh, what do you call that? Destin of uh, source MAC address will be this computer and I will send it to the uh, destination MAC address of this computer or in other words, the router. <clears throat> okay, so this is the this is the IP datagram that's crafted at your computer. Okay, and the router will need to receive it. Okay, so I'm going to uh, copy and then I'll try to paste. <coughs> oh dear. Let me paste it here first. So, um, let's see. I will try to move this here. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Now my let me let me do from the start. Okay. I'm going to try to write it from the start. Okay. So I'll get a new one. Um, my copying and pasting skills in GIMP aren't really up to par, but just pardon me for that. Okay, so again, the Ethernet uh, frame is as such. We will have this part where you have the final uh, destination or source MAC address and final MAC address. And within this Ethernet frame, you will have your IP datagram which contains the source and destination IP address. Okay, so this is the networking layer. Source IP, destination IP. <coughs> okay, so again, what is the source IP? Okay, 192.168.21. Destination 172.16.2.44 Okay, none of these change. <coughs> so okay, source, source MAC address will be uh, when the Ethernet frame reaches this uh, router. Okay, the, the first, part can, first part of the journey is already complete from the computer to the router. <coughs> so the source uh, source MAC address will be originally from this computer and the destination MAC address will be at the router. Okay, now the router receives this, uh, this uh, Ethernet frame and then uh, it knows it's supposed to send this, uh, this data to 172.16.4.4. Okay, now the router re recognizes that uh, yeah, 172.16.4.4 is directly connected to this router. So this router is actually part of the 172 network. So it has two IP addresses because it has two interfaces, so to speak. Okay. And that's what routers do. They're supposed to connect uh, networks, two or more networks together. So this router actually realizes, hey, 172.16.4.4 is on my network, on, on the other part of my network. So what is the router going to do? Okay. Uh, the router is going to search for 172.16.4.4 in its ARP table. So remember when uh, we have ARP, we have this ARP table, we are able to see all the IP addresses and their associated MAC addresses. <coughs> okay, so um, the router will know 172.16.4.4 actually refers to this computer with, the, with a specific MAC address. So problem solved. The router knows what MAC address this computer has. 
So what does the router do? Once it knows that, it's going to change, uh, it's going to delete this old Ethernet frame, the source and MAC address, what, the source and uh, source MAC address and the final MAC address was originally your PC's MAC address and the router get, uh, gateway's MAC address. Now that you want to change network, this is what happens usually in normal routing. Okay, the source MAC address will become the router's okay, MAC address. Okay, using whatever interface. Remember, a computer can have more than one uh, MAC address depending on how many interfaces it has or how many Wi-Fi cards it has. Right? So, uh, the final MAC address will be okay, 172.16.4.4 computers net address so in short over here the ethernet frame the thing about routing is that the ethernet frame will change okay so in the most in the most simple sense um, the long the, the long story short is that the all the router does is that okay if this if you want to uh, send a package from here to here, <clears throat> this router directs the traffic from this network to this network, um, and that's its job. And the second thing is to, usually what it does is to just change the ethernet frame so that the MAC addresses are correct. So <coughs> the ethernet frame will usually change many, many times if you have many, many routers from the start to the finish point. Okay, so uh, this is the most simple, simplified version of routing I can think of because I, I, I know there's a lot, <coughs> excuse me, a lot of other detail in your Ethernet frames and IP datagram that I'm, I'm not including, but this is just to give you an idea of what's going on uh, with routing and what's so special about it. Okay, okay this, this is the, the main gist of routing. Okay. Any, any more you can go and look into the other courses and everything but uh, I will stop here uh, about routing okay so um, I, I don't want to continue too long it's already 27 minutes so I, I spent a lot of time trying to explain and distill down what happens what a router actually does it changes the MAC address of the start and the endpoint for the MAC uh, in your data link layer or it changes the start and endpoint MAC addresses okay and it helps to uh, fill in the unknown MAC address because this computer cannot possibly know all the MAC addresses of every computer on the internet. However, it will have a local, it will have a local uh, address resolution protocol where again, uh, an IP address is matched to a MAC address as we talked about previously, and that is done using the ARP table as we saw. <coughs> so this router, once it receives the packet here. Uh, we'll know that the destination packet is for this uh, this IP address and since this IP address is conveniently connected to this router this router will have the ARP table of this IP address and uh, it will it will connect the IP address there all right so that's basic routing but I have not explained network address translation yet so stay tuned for that in the next video I will end the video now um, thanks for watching I'll, I don't want to make this too long. So see you next time. Bye-bye.